Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson here on the channel. Today I wanted to take uh, some time to go over a free product research software that just recently, while well, I was doing a live call with my mastermind, my inner circle, and we found this really cool product that was doing like 50K a month. There was like three sellers and we found it using a completely free strategy. Uh, I just wanted to come over here to YouTube and show what that strategy is because it's a little bit of an old school one. You know, I started selling on Amazon in 2018, was doing product research in late 2017. And what I was doing back then was quite a bit different than what everyone's doing now. Um, and, and in some ways, a lot of that's still very valuable, especially if you're just getting started, you don't have a bunch of money to invest yet, and, or you're not ready to really start taking the risk, but you are interested in the business model and you wanna start trying your hand at product research. This is a super easy, low risk way to start doing product research and getting some good results, I'm working that muscle of you know looking at things, analyzing them, figuring out whether you'd like to sell them. So be sure to uh, click the like button down below. We're gonna go into a category, right? And so what I can do is um, here on Amazon best sellers, search it on Google, go to Amazon and you can click on best sellers. That's where we are, right? On the left hand side, you're going to get a bunch of different categories and these are top down, right? So beauty and personal care isn't just one category. If I were to click into that, there would be 20 more categories. And now technically there's only like 10 here, or 12 here, but each of these has subcategories as well. And so our goal is we want to look at the reviews as we click in to different categories. Right now I'm seeing 145,000. 20,000, 100,000, right? Too many reviews. I like to see sellers with less than 10,000 reviews if I'm gonna compete in the market, right? So we would keep going in. And so what I might do is I might go into uh, shave and hair removal, okay? Now I'm getting 190,000, 60,000, 40,000. And let's see, we can scroll down the page. You don't have to stay up there. Here's five, okay? And a lot of these are still what I would call five figure reviews meaning, excuse me, over 10,000. So we might not have, have anything here yet. Well, let's just keep going. Let's go into women's. And then what, what's funny is that we were stuck at two categories and now all of a sudden it's opened back up into 10 more categories. And so we can go into, um, let's see, bleaching. Now we're starting to see reviews that are actually more on point with what I consider to be a valuable market. Don't mind the noise in the background, by the way. I live in the city, so my window open, it's hot. I'm just gonna have to push through it. So, if I open up X-Ray on this, this is the only part where you might need to um, invest a little bit of money. You can start with, I have a link in the description if you use code SAVAGE6M20. Now you come to this page, it's $80 a month for this. The other solution would be you can go and look up some free um, if you really wanted to make the whole video free, free um, Amazon softwares, okay? A lot of companies have free trials and stuff. So if you're really like bootstrapping and you don't want to spend any money whatsoever, uh, that's what you could do. If you're kind of committed and you're like, you know, I'm going to give this a shot, then you could just use the link in the description and get that nice discount. So instead of paying 100, pay 80. Um, this is going to allow me to see the revenues of all these sellers, right? So hair bleaching products. Can, one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the revenue and then I'm gonna look at the amount of re reviews that they have. So generally, I'm looking for old, boring markets. So if I see a few products that are the same type of product doing anywhere from 20, 30 to 100K a month, 120K a month in sales, and they have less than 10,000 reviews, what I wanna then do is switch from this kind of um, market-wide or category-wide way of looking and look at what specifically these are. So a fa facial bleach cream would become my new keyword, right? You can generally assume the title, the first phrase in the title is what they're trying to rank for. So I could do facial bleach, that's not how you spell bleach, cream, okay? And we could search that. Now, you'll notice it was starting to auto-generate stuff there. If you just leave the um, search bar open, the same software we were just looking at is going to show you the search volume of these things. Search volume is super important because it shows you if what you're looking at is actually the right search term that people are trying to rank for. Um, 
So face bleach has 1900 search volume, bleach cream, 1400, skin bleaching cream, 1900, um, and so on. And we can get more uh, results and keywords like that with another method I'll show you shortly. Um, so let's take a look at the market here. One of the first things that I'm gonna do is just look at the, this, I do this quick scan where I'm just looking for old boring markets, okay? Now, when I look at uh, for old boring markets, one of the first things I'm looking at is like, does it feel like a, a fun modern market where I'm being shown products where the brands clearly are connecting with the customer? If that's the case, your job just got a lot harder, didn't it? Because if I'm competing with brands like Liquid Death or Poppy or Olipop and these, um, just using like the bubbling drinks category for an example, they're coming to play, right? They they have packaging, branding, brand story that really connects with customers and pulls them right in. What's great about going into a market like what I'm seeing here is actually looks pretty old and boring for the most part. There's a lot of other stuff we have to cover, but for the most part, just stay with me. I could probably create a main image that's gonna have a higher click-through rate than these right here. So I like to think of Amazon as a big sales funnel, right? I have impressions, which is this. I've searched something and I'm getting shown things. Each one of these listings now just gained one impression uh, because I'm looking at the page, okay? So I haven't clicked on anything, but as a seller, there are impressions coming to my listings. I have uh, a metric called click-through rate, which means out of all of the people Amazon shows my product to, what percentage of them, not buy yet, but just wanna click on the listing. So if we go here, click on this listing, they now have a click for the impression that we just did. As the funnel progresses, the next thing would obviously be what? Well, add to cart. Did I add it to cart? Even if I didn't purchase yet, that would be the next step in the funnel. Maybe I purchase the next day or something, or maybe I just purchase right after I add it to cart, add a few more things to my cart and check out. That's now a conversion, right? So that is all we're trying to do. You can go watch a bunch of other videos and get it to seem a lot more complicated than it is. But at the end of the day, you have a presentation of an offer that you're showing to a bunch of impressions, uh, your ability to create a attention grabbing main image with a price that customers feel comfortable clicking on with uh, high social proof, meaning you don't have low review ratings that, that can threaten your click through rate, grab their attention, get them to click. Once they're on your listing, now they've invested a little bit in you. They've basically said yes. It's like a survey, right? Do you want it? Are you interested in this product? They click on it, they said yes. Here's why you should buy this product. So now we go into a presentation once we're on the listing about why they should buy. This is getting more into kind of sales psychology and how the actual sales process works on Amazon. But how do you know if the product is something that you should move forward with or sell? So just a free market. Um, back in the day, I would have said this is way too competitive, way too many reviews. I don't really think that way anymore. Actually, I'm quite pro on going into markets where there are thousands of reviews, some barriers to entry. And one of the reasons for that is that, well, when you go into those markets where there are five to 15,000 in revenue, less than 75 reviews, it's usually just a bloodbath and a red ocean of a bunch of Chinese sellers that are competing on price. And generally, the traditional way of doing private label or um, product research or identifying the product you want to sell leans into just making incremental improvements to be different than your competitors and then all your competitors new ones after you have to do do the same thing to you change their price a little bit now all of a sudden you're having a hard time competing with everyone you're just stuck in that cycle so what we want to do is identify places where maybe those type of sellers would be already a little threatened level up your knowledge of how to create something that the customer actually identifies with. If I showed a customer 10 products, a majority of the customers should say, I want that one. Even if they don't know anything else, just the, the box or the packaging or something. Why do you want that one? That's like the first step. That's where that kind of branding begins, right? Creating something that when a customer sees it, they identify that it is made for them, right? A customer that feels understood is a customer that purchases. Confused customer never buys. Um, so if, if you did all this research, figure all these different ways you'd be different than everyone else, have this offer that no one else has in the market, but you're missing the point, you're just making something different, you're not making something more valuable, okay? So is this a good product to 
sell. One of the first things I would want to do is look at um, open up X-ray again, just so I can get a list of the ASINs for the people who are competing for this. The first um, maybe five unique ASINs that rank organically for this search term. Go here, boom. We'll run Cerebro on these. Okay, Cerebro is just built into that um, same Helium 10 subscription we were talking about. If you want to go free version, well, technically there's I don't think there's a really good free way to do this, but if you have a Seller Central account, one workaround is you can go use the Opportunity Explorer um, to look up some of the keywords that your competitors are um, ranking for by simply typing in a search phrase into uh, Opportunity Explorer in your Seller Central account. Um, so let's go ahead and put in a few filters. Number of competitors and competitor rank. So let's say at least two of those five competitors are ranking one through 15, sorry, 15. So what we're doing is we're taking that list of a few thousand keywords that we had before, narrowing it down to just about 168. We're trying to get the most relevant keywords here. And then I'm gonna sort by search volume. Okay, let's check this out. So bleaching cream is the primary search term. The first one that is kind of unbiased doesn't contain a, um, brand name or something specific, um, just the, the general idea of this product. The next one might be face bleach for women facial hair and then body hair bleach, okay? So there's a few different variations of search terms. I wanna see in general, there are more than 10,000 search volume directly for the product that I'm looking for. So we have bleach and cream, 3,000. Uh, face bleach for women, 2,500. So already we're at 5,500. Body hair bleach, we'll call that another 2,500. So we're at 8,000 face bleach. There's your 10, and then we get into several other that would actually be correct as well. We're probably up towards 15, 20,000, okay? Um, just if I had to guess what all the other long tail keywords would have added up to. Now that I've identified the keywords that are relevant, one of the things that I wanna look at are what's the cost per click? What does it cost to rank in this market? Face bleach. For women, facial hair is about 80 cents. Body hair bleach, 66 cents. So bleaching cream with 3,000 search volume is the most expensive one by far, $1.37. Everything else on this page is pretty much less than that. Um, body hair bleach, only 1,000 less search volume, and it's 66 cents per click. So we can search that, body hair bleach, and we can go look at what the average price is. In general, when we're doing something like this, I wanna see that assuming I have an industry average 10% uh, conversion rate, it means I have to pay that click cost per click about 10 times, right? So 66 cents means I have to pay about $6.60 um, to make a sale with PPC. And so what I can do is I can actually go look at average pricing. And the high end is what I'm focused on primarily, 20 bucks here. Um, I saw some 24, I saw some 27 even. And so keep in mind, as we're looking at different search terms, think through who is the exact customer that's actually searching this. Because some of these are to uh, lighten hair, some were to lighten skin. Okay, so different types of products altogether. So we wanna be paying very close attention to who the customer is, what their need is again, and um, how we're actually creating an offer that's going to suit them. But um, let's just pick one of these here. Let's say this one here, 1999, is ranking, because they were organically ranked about rank number 12 for this, pretty high up. Um, they're one of the, probably the better brandings that I see here. A little, uh, a little bit busy, and I'm not going to judge the packaging too much here, but let's just go with this. So they have a th uh, over 2,000 sales a month, doing 43k per month in sales, uh, with a price of 20 or 19.99. If I go to profitability calculator, this you can do for free. Um, you can just go look up the um, profitability calculator by Amazon. There's a free version of it. I want to stick to the theme of the video. I mentioned free product research tools. So anything, I mean, anytime I use something software related, I wanna let you know if there's a free way of doing it. Um, obviously you can see that at a lot of places, getting this, if you're actually starting and you know you're gonna be doing this would be worth it because um, it's all just built into the Amazon page, but check this out. So let's assume 
the unit manufacturing cost is going to be um, about 20% of the uh, price that we're selling it for. That's the case here. That's an okay number to use, 15 to 20%, I would say. The so $4 cost of goods sold. And let's say that because we're gonna be sourcing in the US, the freight cost is only gonna be on a product this big, maybe 25 cents a unit. And package design, we're gonna look, uh, again, work with a local company to create our box. Maybe we're talking, uh, you know, 70 cents per box. So let's call it we have $3.30 to actually fill the box with the goods that we're looking at. Uh, this is a pretty simple product, kind of a commodity, probably won't be much more than that. Let's just stick with what it generated. If you come down here to other costs and we go to dollars, we can factor in our cost per click and see how effectively we might be able to rank something like this. So um, because this is a Again, going back to what the product is, a hair lightening kit. Let's go to Cerebro. Look at the ones that specifically talk about hair. So body hair bleach, facial hair bleach, 66 cents, 80 cents. Um, bleach cream, body bleach, 82 cents. Uh, let's split the difference and call it 75 cents. Um, lowest one was 66 cents. And so we can go for six to $7 would be the added cost that we would have for our PPC. Um, this is if you had a 10% conversion rate. Now, that's industry average. Let's assume that we actually took everything we know about this customer, create a significantly better listing, offer, packaging, and brand story, and we have a 15% conversion rate. And now just in case you're thinking, well, Paul, is that even possible? Well, yeah, it is. My conversion rate is actually over 17%. Um, so I can say instead of $7, what if I only had to pay five dollars for this um, because I'm making a sale every seven clicks or every six clicks. Well, all of a sudden, even with PPC factored in at a 15% conversion rate, which is <laughs> quite high, keep in mind, you have 22% margin left over on your PPC, which means your PPC would be directly scalable. If we were going with the seven, which is industry average conversion rate, 10%, so you were a little bit less than industry average conversion rate, converting at about maybe 8%, you, you still are scaling profitably, technically, maybe almost break even at that point, right? So what this starts to show me is as I go into my negotiation, my sourcing, um, call it what you will, product design, research and development, I know that if I want to compete at that 1999 price tag, then I have to have a product that costs about $4. And indeed, with the current cost per click analysis, I would be able to scale this profitably. Um, I have anywhere from 50 to 70% organic sales in my product listing. So we're only adding this cost to the sales that we're making with PPC. As we make sales of PPC and get ranked, we start making sales actually that have 200% ROI and 42% margin, which almost directly mimic the numbers for my product that I sell in my pro uh, market. So that is uh, a quick free way to go find a product that you can identify some of the um, key things that I, as a six year seller on Amazon would be looking for, talking about profitability, old boring market that I can compete with visually on creative and branding, um, better storytelling and better identification of the specific customer's needs to add an element to your product that no one else has so that when they see the market, um, you truly do have a unique offer. And it's just about your ability to sell that offer to the customer, increase your click-through rate and conversion rate, and make sales profitably so that you can make money selling physical products online. If at any point this seems overwhelming to you and you want to join my mastermind. I have a uh, link down in the description where you can come work with me one on one. Plus you get a call uh, every Thursday with myself um, and the other members of the group that last anywhere from an hour to two hours long with direct guidance, not just course videos like we're going over it together. Screen share, Zoom, video, face to face. I found that's the best way to teach people because you can ask unlimited questions in that time window um, and be added to the Slack channel to ask questions even when we're not on calls as well. Um, so if you're looking for something uh, with a little bit more guidance and uh, 
help with a one-on-one -on -one touch to it, um, I offer a small group setting where we can do that. It's really all my focus is going on as far as um, course level stuff. I've been kind of dropped away from all of the like mass touch stuff. I just want to grow a small group of entrepreneurs. Um, they're all growing profitable, successful Amazon FBA brands like myself. Um, so yeah, check that out, the link in the description. Other than that, be sure to like and subscribe down below uh, for more free content just like this if you're just getting started. And I'll see you in the next video. Later.